if you look at the four driving forces, in addition to globalization, for the first time in human history, three billion people are connected. In five years, people expect four billion people to be connected. That's going to make a big difference to how companies operate. The second, digital technologies are becoming extremely inexpensive. Uh, for example, the cell phone is only the starting point that you can get a cell phone for $30. But you can also get 16 gigabits of memory in a USB for less than $20. So the costs are going down dramatically. And this means technology does not differentiate any longer between the rich and the poor. The poorest people can have exactly the same technology as the rich have. Maybe less bells and whistles, but the same technology. The cell phone is just the starting point. And then there is convergence of technologies. The cell phone is a phone, it's a computer, it's a map, it's a watch, it's a camera. So all these technologies and uh, businesses are coming together. And finally, I think social networks are becoming extremely important, like Facebook, MySpace, so if you take these four drivers, connectivity, digital technologies, uh, certainly convergence of technologies and industries, and social networks, com with, coupled with globalization, it's going to fundamentally create new opportunities and new ways to compete. So the substance of the book assumes these driving forces and then asks the question, how would the poor and the rich markets change dramatically, and therefore how do we create value? That is the core substance of the book. If you look at what the heritage of most companies are, I say let's go back to Model T. If you look at Model T, it was totally vertically integrated. You put iron ore on one side, you get cars on the other side. All the resources required to create the product was within the company. And more importantly, it was an undifferentiated consumer base. That's why the famous one-liner from Henry Ford, any color car is okay as long as it's black. That's our heritage. No company operates that way today. But that's our heritage, that's where we're coming from. I'm going to the other extreme. If we can think of one consumer experience at a time, even if you have 100 million consumers, for example, Google has 100 million consumers, but I can go to Google and construct my own page. It's called iGoogle. So it is one personalized experience at a time. And a more important part is none of the content in Google is produced by Google. So all the content comes from outsiders. They aggregate it and give it to me. So one consumer experience at a time and in order to serve that one consumer, you get resources from around the globe. This is very different. It's 180 degree different from Model T. So I call this N equal to one, one unique personalized experience. And R, the resources are global. This is very different from vertically integrated, undifferentiated consumers. That's where the world is going. And that is true whether it, you're in Starbucks or you're in Apple. Apple, you can create your own music portfolio, but Apple does not create the content. Neither does Apple produce the device. The device is made in China, the displays come from Japan, the semiconductors come from uh, South Korea. They're all put together. The software is owned and the design is owned by Apple, but that's about all. So it's R equal to J, one consumer portfolio at a time. You make your own portfolio of music. Mm -hmm. So this is happening not only in what I call the new age companies, Google, Apple, Netflix, and so on, but also old age companies like in tires, insurance, automotive, and healthcare. So that I think is the new approach, N equal to one, one personalized experience, and resources from around the world to make it happen.